Hey, 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 everybody. What's up? What's up? Hala, hala, bishabab. Welcome back to Park and Chat for daily updates, football news, transfer news, club news. Of course, now the new coaches with their teams and news throughout the leagues that are coming, Champions League, everything you need. Don't forget to like this video, subscribe to this channel and share it with your friends and football fanatics. So guys, I'm going to take today the opportunity since the World Cup ended. Congratulations to congratulate to French again and say Allez le bleu and congratulate to France. However, I'm going to talk about Niko Kovac and the new trainer of FC Bayern München. So, what should we expect from this coach? What is the experience of this coach? What did this coach do until now? And what is he going to do? I'm going to discuss three points mainly. One, the experience he has, which is quite short. Two, the problems that he might face now coming into this team. And three, the tactics that he's going to use and what's already implemented in Bayern and what he's going to modify and play on. So the first thing, we know that he coached the Croatian team and he was really good with that team. We also saw him coach Frankfurt and he took Frankfurt from an average team to a team who, to a team who actually contended for European places and reached the final of the German Cup twice and won it last year against Bayern München. This is what he's, his experience is. He's a determined coach, he's a very tactical, variable coach, and he's flexible in his decisions. Plus, he's a very strict coach, but strict in a good way, and not strict in a bad way, like a soldier or something, no. Strict in a good way. This is a bit about his experience. Let's talk about the problems he's gonna face with Bayern. The main problems he's gonna face with Bayern are, one, don't forget, Bayern are coming into the season with the motivation, maybe the worst motivation they had in years. One, losing again against Real, again against Real Madrid in the Champions League. Two, the exit of most of their players at the World Cup group stages and maximum round of 16. And three, of course, the depression of the players, the change of staff, the rotation, the old players, and all these problems that Nico has to finish. So, how can he solve these problems? First of all, the problem of the motivation of the players, I think this could be a good thing. Why? Because the players are going to come earlier than expected back to the team. So, what he has to do is he has to take each and every player, talk to him aside, put him aside a bit, talk to him, tell him how, where we're going to fix each other, find the strength of each player, and motivate him slowly to the team. Two, the teams, since they are all going to be back at the same time, except for Corentin Tolosio, who won that World Cup, they have to, they're going to be missing the uh, USA trip, which is a good thing, a perfect decision by Kovac, so that they can do the rehab and train well and the do all the basic training in uh, Germany at the Zabinastrasse. And then when they come back, they're going to go to Tegerse, where they're going to have the main training session, which is the closed training um, session. It's going to be eight days and that's where he's going to implement all his ideas perfectly the tactics and all the decisions he's going to do and how he's going to use the team and he's, how he's going to use the player another problem he's going to face is robin and ribery these two are two ego players they need to know that they're old now and that they are mainly there to help support the team they're going to be they should learn that they might be not in the starting 11 from the beginning to the end this is something important to know they also should know that they're going to be there to show the players how to be professional, especially the young players coming. And of course, the most important players are the wing players like them, Gnabry, Komal, and if Bayern decide to sign another one. So they need to see that. They need to teach them the movements, the dribbling, give them, show them, and direct them to the right decision and how to deal with pressure and how to deal with one-on-one -on -one situations with the big teams. This is for these uh, these problems that they have now for the third point and most important point in my decision the tactics and the discipline and the variability that Niko Kovac is going to be using in his team we saw him play with the Frankfurt with a 3-5-2 formation the three defensive line or in German the Dreierkette this in my opinion could function very well with Bayern however they need to know which players to use because if they use the 3-5-2 it means automatically we're gonna go into another problem which is the problem of midfield 
which means two of the defensive players, Kimish and Alaba, who are our right and left backs, are going to be playing part of the five midfield line. So automatically, two midfield spots are out of the out of the question. However, if we play the usual 4-2-3-1, then the five midfield positions are for the five midfielders that we have. So, how is he going to deal with that problem? My opinion, he would be either starting with Boating Hummels and Kimmich or Boating Hummels and Alaba. And that way, he would gain a position in the midfield. So, when he st starts with Boating Hummels and Sule, let's say, then we have Alaba on one side and we could have Coman on the other side and then we could have in the two in, in the middle are going to be um, Khafi Martinez, Thiago, Vidal, Goretzka, if he's going to use them, and Khamis, uh, Khamis, uh, Khamis, whatever. And then we're going to have uh, in the front, in front of them, maybe Müller, or maybe another player if we get another one, since Müller's performances haven't been up to date. If he's going to use that, this means, this is actually a modification of the 4-3-3. Why? Because when we attack the 3-5-2, we have the left and right backs attacking and helping the attack. We have the two, defen two defensive midfielders staying at the back. And then we have a five attacking component, which is extremely strong and if extremely effective against counter-attacks. If we decide to turn it into a 4-3-3, the 4-3-3, which is the strategy that Luis Van Gaal implemented in Bayern, and Bayern has been working on that since the beginning. This strategy is going to be the four defenders I mentioned before, and then three in the middle would be, let's say, Thiago, Khamis, uh, and uh, Khafi Martinez, and then in the front we're going to have Sergi Gnabry, Coman, and Lewandowski, since Lewandowski might not leave right now. If it's not Sergi Gnabry, then we would see maybe one of the two experienced players in Robin or Ribéry with Coman and Lewandowski in front, or we would have the false number nine with Müller in front, because Müller playing on the right or left flank is an extremely bad idea. Behind the defense, behind the attacker, exactly in number 10 position, that's where he is most effective. And he could be part of the three midfield lines in the 4-3-3, where he would play the role of Griezmann with France, for example. This is my idea. We also have them when they defend. How are they going to defend? They could defend in a 4-5-1. The one Lewandowski starting there, the four defenders in uh, Hummels, Boateng, Kimish, and Alaba, and the five midfielders just pulling back with the two wings at the back, helping Alaba and helping Kimish. That way, we'd have a very stable defensive line. And this way, when we defend in a 4 5 1 and then attack in a 3 5 2 or attack in a 4 3 3 or attack in a 3 uh, 4 3, that way we would make sure 100% that the team is on fire, attacking, and coming to the back. This was my analysis of the Bayern team who's coming and my analysis of Nikon Kovac. If you like this video, share it, subscribe to this channel, and ciao.